German prisoners, out of the war and sure of rations on the British army scale, out of all proportion with what they give our men. Numbered with them now is Franz von Papen, a big fish netted among the growing haul of little ones. Caught with him was his son. Here is an object lesson not likely to be forgotten. Von Papen is a Junker. Throughout the 30 years of his slimy career, he has always been near the center of German intrigue. Given time and opportunity, his son would probably make another diplomat of the same shady school. Foxy Franz, the cheating double-crosser, leaves the sinking ship. We're looking at the Thiessen Steelworks in the Ruhr, a gaunt, forbidding skeleton that was once one of Germany's busiest war factories. Herr Thiessen used to be a close friend of Herr von Papen and one of the wealthiest men in Germany. He it was who first financed a certain unknown Austrian ex-corporal by name Adolf Hitler and set the future Führer on the road to power. This is where that road led, to the utter destruction of the entire heart and center of German war industry, the Ruhr. A special target of RAF Bomber Command has been the Sterfrader synthetic oil plant. The refineries are now a wilderness. Serving this huge spider's web of war factories was the biggest inland dock system in Germany linking the Rhine and the Ruhr. Every loading center had its own rail yard working day and night, pumping oil supplies into the Reich. Now the tugs and barges are here to stay. The Ems Weser Canal at the junction of two inland waterways pictures a tale of super accurate day and night bombing. Canals and viaducts in an area pitted like the moon's surface with the massive craters of 10 ton bombs. The kingpin of Ruhr industry was Essen, Germany's steel city. In this war, Krupps of Essen turned out 7,000 heavy naval guns, an uncountable number of famed 88mm guns, tanks, ships and U-boats. It's all in the past tense now. Sole owner of the steel empire, Alfred Krupp, told Americans who captured him recently that his works were once worth 160 million marks. Only a scrap merchant would look at them now. Bleached bones of steel girders make a fitting graveyard for this monstrous warmongering arms industry. The words of Thomas Jefferson were never truer than now. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of tyrants. It is its natural manure.